Hi, welcome back. Harry Palmer. This is video number three in a series of whatever comes through. I've still got more notes that I need to get through. So I was talking about when you receive a text message that two people were talking or a group of people were talking, you were not supposed to be in that strain and you get it and your heart is just like ripped out of your chest. Well, I was driving along one day and I got a text message from Beth to the group or something saying something about, I'm so glad we're getting out this weekend and I'm just so glad Carrie's not going. And it's like, you know, it's like, oh, <laughs> they don't want me. Well, first of all, the energy in this group was so beyond healthy. It was so toxic. So what do I do? I get this text. So I drive over to this woman's house. I'm never going to feed her her ego by saying her name because she's all ego. She calls herself a hotelier because she knows how your room should be. Oh my God, this woman's something else. So anyway, I go to her house where all of these friends are sitting around her table always, are always drinking and sitting around a table. So I walk in and they're all sitting there and then I'm like, I'm like, oh my God, you guys best sent this text. And they're all like, oh, that's sad, that's horrid. And meanwhile, like the undercurrent is all like going like, oops, she knows. And when you get a text like that, it's huge. And here's the story. Okay, September 15th of last year, I was going to go to the local karaoke place and I was going to sing. I wanted to get out and start singing again. So I had it planned. I knew where it was. I knew what time it started, but it was starting to get dark. You know, September 15, a little dark a little earlier. It doesn't start till 830. And so anyway, I'm like, eh. So I poured a glass of wine and turned on the TV. I'm like, I'm just going to watch a movie. I was told at that moment, I didn't even have a sip of wine. Go to karaoke. Covered up the wine, put it in the fridge, and I went to karaoke. That night, he walked in. Neither one of us fit into this establishment. Neither one of us. And it was absolutely magical. I can't even describe it. The, the giddiness of childhood crushes was just, it was just the beginning of something magical. And I had my dog at the time and I couldn't stay out long, but so we talked and we knew we were gonna see each other again. So we exchanged information and I went home and we texted and giggled all night. It was just magical. I met him the next day at a laundromat because he had clothes to wash. He was living on his boat that he was refurbishing. And it was like, the, uh, and, uh, the attraction was unbelievable. Unbelievable. I've never experienced anything like this. So long story short, this man and I, he would come over and it's so hard to describe. With this man, I wanted to be completely sober in every way. Like I didn't want a glass of wine. I wanted nothing. I wanted to just be completely present whenever I had a chance to be around him. Because once we would be together, it was like the bubble just closed and we were one. It was like the bubbles merged. And for the entire time from when he was in my presence till he had to walk out the next morning and I would say goodbye, we were one. I can't describe it. I've never known anything quite so entangling and as perfect as it was. And what was beautiful about it is I loved it. And I could have got lost in this man every minute of every day. But the morning came and be, I see, I see, because I had stuff to do. He had stuff to do. And it's like, I didn't want to linger. It's like, you know, we were just so together and we were together. We could we'd be like all day. So he would go off and do his thing. It was magical. We had a few weeks where we couldn't be together because he had work to do elsewhere. And it was a matter of, is he coming back? Am I going to see this man again? And I felt to my core I would, but it was like, everything was unknown. Everything was unknown. So October 18th, I met him on September 15th. On October 18th, I hadn't seen him in a few weeks. I was all dressed up. I was getting ready to go audition for a play, my first ever. No, I didn't get the role. I didn't really want it. It was just fun to do it. But before I left my house, standing in my backyard, ocean view, was the most beautiful man I'd ever seen. He swam through shark infested water to get me a lemonade. He did everything he could to get back to me. And we were perfect. Oh my God, we were perfect. After that time apart, 
we spent more time. He was very busy during the day and I had a lot to do, but we spent a lot more time together. We He'd come a little earlier and he'd leave a little later in the morning or we'd go out until I got a text. <laughs> Everything was beautiful. And then I sensed something was going on in his world. There was something turbulent and he was being sharp and, but I didn't care. I just, I never even asked him how old he was. It was like, I didn't even know his last name. It was just, I didn't ask any questions. It was just magic. It was perfect. Until I got a text message. I was getting ready to go have lunch with my friend, Terry. And I felt my phone and grabbed it and looked at it. And it was a text message from him. It was not meant for me. <laughs> so it was meant for, he said he was not married, but it was marriage terms. But I get that because my ex and I, husband, you know, the words intermingle. But I knew there was something going down. And so I got this text message and I was like, okay ow and then I said hey Terry what time and I'm on my way I met Terry for lunch and I had lunch and then the next day I made a complete video I don't get heartbroken it was like it is what is it's like we move on and I realized that I didn't know what to realize but it all came clear in the bathtub when I got all these downloads today is we were supposed to meet we had to meet it was magical we were at the right place at the right time but my book had to be finished. I had to finish this book that I just am wrapping up right now. It's just mere pages and arrangement. I had to finish this book. And a lot of what I talk about, this is where you can't wrap your brain around it because if he was in my life, I couldn't write the book. It wouldn't have come through. It couldn't because when we're alone, we are empty vessels when we allow ourselves to be an empty vessel and things come to us. They come through us. But when you have a partner, and I honestly don't know how people do it with partners to find your truth, your authentic arrow yourself, because you have to find compromise. I think a perfect partnership is two people that you're together and you're following your arrows and you support each other and you have no idea where it's going to take you. If not, the partnership isn't going to make it. Corey had to send me that text because it was too good. We were too good. The, it, it was too magical. And I was too all in, just ready to just ride wherever it went but I know this book had to be finished I know I have to finish this book what it talks about is how even the highest believers people who I've walked with the people who are right here in this blue that are healers they are magical they have magical phenomenal paranormal powers when I vibrated beyond where they were because I was looked at them as this little mouse when I first met them like oh my gosh you people all this stuff you're capable of and all this stuff and I looked at them like how can I ever even become like you and now they look at me like they can't believe something for the first time we teach everybody there should be nothing you cannot believe because everything can be real if you can believe it you can see it and so I've had no beliefs in anything so I just said yes when I surrendered I said take me wherever it is I'm supposed to go and I was brought all the way to this place to where you are no longer searching you're there it's complete bliss and then you are just a messenger I have no thoughts in my head ever I get downloads life is bliss but I'm alone alone if I'm talking to other people if I'm having conversation if other human energy is near me it will affect me so Corey had to send me that text so we could stop and I could do what I did and now I've written it and I have heard from him recently and I'm selling my house I have no idea where I'm going or what. I don't know where he lives. I don't know what he's doing. But Corey, if you're listening to this, 
you know, maybe I should buy a house where you live and maybe we should go out on a proper date. What do you think?